Before I bought the Strat, I had this very cheap Epiphone Les Paul, which I was planning to modify and refinish. If y'all wanna see that, please let me know in the comments below. I didn't really get any feedback, but we're doing it anyways. Ghost guy, ghost go. Subscribe to Sims Recording on YouTube. Clip that, clip that shit. Okay, so the time has come. Uh, you saw the title, you know what we're doing. Um, this is my old Epiphone Les Paul. Very cheap Les Paul. I think it was like 130 bucks. You can buy new, uh, what is this? The Special II, Special 2. You can buy new Special 2s for like 140 bucks. But uh, yeah, I've had this for many years. This is a 2012 and I got this like, I think the same year. It was like late middle school going into high school. So I'm pretty sure I got this guitar the Christmas of 2012. So before we go over what all I'm going to be using for this modification project, I need to quickly go over the wear and tear on this guitar because originally I was going to repaint this. I don't think we have time. It's not really that bad anyways. But to quickly go over the wear and tear, there is a giant scratch on the bag i don't know if you can see that i might need to put a picture on screen but i was putting this on a stand which i'm now using for my dean base i have been using this on that stand and every time i would take it off it would hit the back and that's why it's torn to crap there's a little bit of markings on the headstock it's not really that bad there is some dings on the body but you don't really notice it until you put it into the light. Okay, so now let's quickly go over the parts that I'm going to be using for this modification project. Um, in total, I spent about 230 something dollars. Um, I just got this today. I got everything today from Sweetwater. So first off, we got tuners. These are the Grover Roto Grip Locking Tuners, Rotomatic Tuners. They are a three by three. Um, it says on the package, locks automatically, quick string change, 18 by one gear ratio for precise tuning. I like Grovers. I never used Grover locking tuners before, but I do have normal Grover tuners on my Gibson which are very nice and I have Fender brand locking tuners on my Strat which does the job it's great so I expect this to be really really nice I ended up not using these um you're gonna see why here in a second and uh I'm kind of embarrassed to be honest I'm also going to be replacing the nut I'm not really a big fan of the nut that's already on there so this is the Graftech PT6060 blah 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 black tusk XL slotted epiphone style guitar nut and uh, these are supposed to be self-lubricated, uh, permanently lubricated nuts and saddles, increases harmonic content and richness, increases tuning stability. So this is pre-slotted for any Epiphone that was made pre-2014. Like I said, that Les Paul right there is a 2012. So this should fit nicely. But yeah, the old nuts gotta go. It's gone. Bye bye and finally we got pickups so i never played this brand before but i know how much of a big deal the brand is it's a very huge brand with a very long running history and every time you think of pickups this company is like one of the first companies you think of and i can't believe i never played these pickups before i never played any of these brands pickups but this is the seymour duncan hot rotted humbucker set i like yeah i never played seymour duncans before um on the back it says seymour created this classic humbucker combination while in england in 1974 and remains his favorite today um it's got the uh sh4 jb bridge and it has the SH2N Jazz Neck. These pickups are supposed to sound very, very good, especially for like classic rock. I'm not big on metal, but I know that you can pull it off with these pickups. These pickups cost me about $149. Uh, the nut cost me about $12, $11.60, and the tuners cost me around $74.99. I could be wrong. And lastly, we have for strings 
uh, regular slinkies from Ernie Ball. These are 10 by 46 tens. These gauges are pretty much the way to go when you're playing like Epiphone guitars and Gibson guitars because of the scale length. Um, so yeah, I got 10 for those. I also got nines for my Strat, but doesn't matter. And of course, when you buy stuff from Sweetwater, you get candy. I got two bags, probably because I paid over $200 worth of stuff but I gave the second bag to my brother. Um, we got some, we got a Tootsie Roll, some Smarties, a Fireball like always, and a Peppermint. That Fireball is going straight into my mouth. And then we got stickers. I got two stickers because the uh, strings and the other parts came in separate packages. Um, so I have no idea where I'm gonna put these. They're going somewhere. I'm very pumped. This is gonna be awesome. Um, I haven't played this guitar in years. It's been like crud. It's been like three to four years since I played the guitar with everything stock. Like when I got the Strat and the Katana, I just gave up on that guitar completely and I just let it sit there for years. But we're bringing it back. We're going to modify it. It's going to be great. Stay tuned. Okay, so a couple of hours ago as of recording, we went ahead and took the old nut out and replaced it with the new Black Tusk nut. It actually didn't take that long. It wasn't even really hard. I had my dad help just in case. But basically, my dad took a scalpel and traced around the edges of the nut. And then he would take a screwdriver and pretty much knock it out. If you don't have a scalpel and you're doing something like this, an exacto knife or a very sharp razor blade should do the trick. Then we took a sock and wrapped the neck and clamped the nut down. I know it looks silly, but we used the sock to keep the clamp from leaving any marks on the neck. As of recording, the wood glue has already dried up and we are moving on to the tuners. And here is the original nut. So it's been a week or so and I had to get new tuners because the previous tuners I had would not fit through the peg holes on the headstock. I got a hold of Andrew from Sweetwater. Uh, he pretty much told me I could send them back. They would send me these certain ones that I wanted. And since they were $25 cheaper, I would get that $25 back onto my card eventually. But turns out these are the same exact tuners but without the locking mechanism. You see that? It is not going in. I didn't want to call them again and tell them I messed up once again. So what I'm going to do is when my dad comes home, we are going to drill in the holes so that it will fit. I think they're going to look wonky, but it's whatever. Okay, so as you can see, we kind of chipped the back and the front when we were drilling in the holes. I'm not even upset. I knew it was going to happen. Once we put the new Grovers on, um, it's not even noticeable. Like, the tuner covers everything. What's kind of funny with the new Grovers is that with them on, the headstock looks like one of the newer Epiphone headstocks. Not like what they're recently doing with the Kalamazoo design. I think they're only doing that for a limited time. But it almost looks like the shape that you would normally see on the more expensive Epiphones. I think Epiphone uses Grovers on their more expensive models. Take for example the Jared James Nichols Old Glory. Yes, the tuners are Jared specs, but I have seen some high range and mid range epiphones with grovers as well and now we're on to the pickups what you're seeing now is the original wiring with the stock pickups still in i'm not a big fan of how they did this um i mean the zip tie is normal but like the way they stuffed the wires in made it very difficult to move things around especially when you're desoldering the original pickups and putting the new pickups in it was not fun at all even with my dad helping and finding a wiring diagram on Seymour Duncan's website, we were still having a hard time. We had to resort to a YouTube video. It was really bad. But I've heard that wiring has gotten better at Epiphone, and I'm glad to hear that because that was not fun at all. And that's all I gotta say about that. Here is the guitar with the new pickups in. And here is a picture of the new wiring, which looks a lot more simple than what Epiphone did originally to this guitar. And just for kicks, let's check out the back of both of these pickups. First off, we got the Epiphone pickups. And both pickups have the Epiphone logo on the back. You got two stickers, one being P 
pickups BHC and then you got an ROHS compliant sticker don't know what that is somebody please let me know in the comment and then you got one pickup saying F and one saying R so F means front which means top pickup neck pickup and then you got R which means rear bottom pickup Bridge. simple as that and then looking at the back of the new pickups there's nothing really special going on both have the Seymour Duncan logo on the back there's only one sticker on both and on those stickers you got the serial numbers and the names of the pickups okay so here we are two months later uh, I got glasses on now I'm wearing the same shirt and the guitar is finally done so here it is in all its glory the new Seymour Duncan pickups, both the JB and the SH2N neck, jazz model, whatever. The new Graph Tech nut, which works very well, I'm very surprised. And the Grover tuners. I wish I kept the locking tuners if I known at the time that I was going to have to drill holes anyway. But yeah, that's on me. So now that you know everything, you saw the process, let's go ahead and hear this thing in a demo. Okay, so with the demo being done, what do I think of this overall? This is awesome. I was not expecting the pickups to be as hot as they were. The deck is perfectly fine for like clean tones because it can get clean, but it can get a little gritty too. And that's what I really like in a neck humbucker. <laughs> And the bridge wow like DJB I was not expecting it to be as hot as it was I need to find out how many ohms the JB has because I can tell already it is a hot pickup the nut works very well and the tuners work very well too um, when I first strung this guitar up, the strings would not stay in tune for a while, like an hour. But after adjusting to the tension, the strings would soon stay in tune. Actually, the bottom E string snapped on me the night before recording this. And so I was like, I didn't even record the demo yet. I need to get a new string. Uh, I, could, I didn't find an E string, but I found a B string. And I decided to take the B string and just use it as an E string. It hasn't snapped on me yet. So, so far so good. Still sounds great. But yeah, this was really fun. Um, this took forever, it feels like. It was like two months since I recorded anything. And I'm glad I did this because I haven't played this guitar in years. Like I said, I had this since 2012. I stopped using it when I got the Strat and the Katana. I was, I was thinking about selling this at first, but then I thought, no, this guitar has some potential. I've had this for years, so that's why I wanted to upgrade it. What do y'all think? I think this sounds great, especially for the studio. I think you can pull this off. I got to pat myself on the back, pat my dad on the back wherever he is. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought down below. Like, comment, share, and definitely subscribe because there is more coming your way. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time. Peace.